subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, lovely learners. Once again, we meet to talk about issues of governance and government. Welcome to SHSR on Joy Learning Channel. I'm as usual your facilitator, Madam Adraina Abeniaboa. Today we're going to talk about something quite different from the ordinary. In most cases, some people will say it's a business topic, but it is also part of governance. Because remember when we spoke in Form 1 about government as an institution of state, we made it quite clear that government was supposed to provide jobs, and essential services for the people. So when we talk about public administration, we are talking about all forms of the controlling of the economy in the sense of the public or in the sense of the government. And we also talked about, remember we talked about two forms of economic government or economic structures that makes up government. We talk about socialism and capitalism. But Ghana is a capitalist state, I guess I'm right, where the production and distribution of goods and services are in the hands of the ordinary Ghanaian. But then, there are some times when publicly the state must administer certain institutions as well as business entities to be able to make sure that the system is safe and sound. So let's go on. On our screen we see the logos of so many companies. A few of them, that we know. And so we can see Multi TV, we can see Fidelity Bank, we can see GBC, GCB, we see Gassim, Ghana Water Company Limited, Coca Cola, Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. These are a few businesses in Ghana. Why am I showing you this? Can you guess? Let's do a little teaser. What has our lesson got to do with GCB, which is a banking institution, and Gassim? which is a cement producing company in Takwadi. What about Ghana Water Company and Fidelity Bank? Maybe Coca-Cola is bringing us some drinks for today's program. Then there is Ghana Broadcasting Company Limited. Then there is Multi TV. Is there a connection? Very good. We want to look at today what we call public corporations, which is also an element of public administration because they are, they are administered by the state. We said that even though Ghana is a capitalist nation, there are some elements of our economy that lies in the hands of the state. As part of governance, they are to ensure that these companies or these businesses or structures thrive so that the ordinary Ghanaian will be able to afford a lot of luxuries or a lot of necessities for his or her satisfaction. Is that okay? So those companies we saw, some of them are private. Am I right? Some of them are for private entities, and some of them are controlled by the state. So let's look at, look, let's look at sorry, let's look at Multi TV. Multi TV is a, a private entity or a private business. We look at Ghana Broadcasting Company Limited. It is a what? It's a public corporation. We talk about Coca-Cola, which belongs to some private um, company. Now we we'll look at Ghana Water Company, we look at Gassem, Fidelity, and GCB, and we see that they are all different in their own ways. Some of them are administered or they are, are, they are um, controlled by private individuals, and others are controlled by the state. So we call it public corporations. Public corporations. This is our focus for this particular lesson. And so by the time we are done with this particular lesson which would hap which happens to be another interesting lesson we should be able to define what a public corporation is then we should be able to explain five features of a public corporation when we are done with that we should be able to discuss five reasons they are established then we would examine ways of controlling these public corporations and explain the concept of privatization and the need to privatize public corporations so let's see what a public corporation is. Good. We say a public corporation is an administrative and management body established by an act of parliament to provide essential services to the public at affordable rates. At what rates? Affordable rates. 
We say it is an administrative and management body established by an act of parliament to provide essential services to the public at affordable rates. So first of all, we want to know that it is an administrative and management body. It could be an insurance company, it could be a banking company or a banking sector, it could be um, a retail sector, it could be a processing sector, it could be a, a, an industrial sector, a manufacturing sector. But then in most cases, it is brought into being or it is created by an act of parliament. Parliament sits and uses the normal or the, the, the ordinary procedure of lawmaking to make an act. An act is the same as a what? As an ordinance or a law. Now, the law allows that particular public operation to come into force or come into being. Is that okay? It allows it to become what? To become a legal entity, to begin to function as a business or as an entity that would create a platform where people can access that particular entity for the benefit of getting essential services. When we say essential services, we say these are the services people cannot do without in a state at affordable price or affordable rates. When they are brought into being by parliament, they are given or they are um, awarded, we wouldn't say awarded, but they are given to a sector minister. So for example, if it has to do with the financial sector, it is given to the minister for finance. Is that okay? If it is um, a, produ a production sector that produces raw materials or is in the form of processing raw materials, it is given to possibly the minister for a Greek or whatever. To that extent, we call those people sector ministers, ministers responsible for the sector of which that public operation is going to operate. Is that okay? Very good. So when we say a public operation, we say it is an administrative and management body established by an act of parliament to provide essential services to the public at affordable rates. To that far, we say that a public uh, corporation, sorry, we say a public corporation or public corporations are semi-autonomous and may be a service oriented without profit motives or may be commercial with the aim of making profit. We say they are semi-autonomous. When parliament brings it into being, all right, it is given to a sector minister. The sector minister would then create what we call the board. It is called the board of directors. These directors are appointed by the sector minister. And these directors will sit and see how the system or that particular entity would operate. To that extent, parliament will now allow it to become semi-autonomous on its own, give it the freedom to operate. If it is a bank, it would allow it and the board to determine the staffing as well as salaries of the staffing. When it is done, then it would be given a budget to operate on. And then they will leave them on their own to operate in terms of management and administration. And so something happens or something goes wrong, parliament does not intervene, allows it to work for the benefits of the Ghanaian or the benefits of the citizens of the state. We say that it may be service oriented without profit making. It means that it is created to provide services at no cost to the, and not at, the, at no cost to the company, but at no cost to the consumer. So for example, Ghana Water Company is only it only charges the client or it charges the consumers for the treatment of water, possibly for some other charges that the and business people will tell. And then at no pro it does not make profit out of the treatment of water and the sale of the water to the ordinary Ghanaian or the ordinary citizen. There is no profit making. But there are others that are commercial with the aim of making profits. For example, the banks. ADB is, or Agricultural Development Bank, is um, a public corporation. Is that right? It was created by an act of parliament. Its motive or its main aim is to make banking to the agricultural sector of the economy for farmers and the rest. Now it is in the bigger cities and it is making airways. Its main profit, its main motive, sorry, is to make profit. It makes profit out of its businesses. Though not too large, but the motive is to create a platform where more profits can be accrued from the services it provides. Because when you take a loan from ADB, mm, they would ask you to pay interest. 
the interest over the loan is because the money is coming from somebody's savings. And that would be used, or the interest would be used to give that person some form of profits over the, the use of his funds or her funds. Then the rest will be declared as profits. So we have two categories of public corporations. The first one is what we see now as commercial corporations. Commercial corporations, they are also public. And we said that the main aim is to make or maximize profits in the production of goods or the rendering of services to the public. The main aim is to do what? Is to make or maximize profits in the production of goods and the rendering of services to the public. So it is not only the production of goods, but also they also render what? Services. So we can talk about trading. For example, we have Goyal or Ghana Oil Company. And then we have Banking, Agricultural Development Bank, which is a service that it gives to customers. And then we talk about manufacturing. This is the production of goods. That is um, Valco, Volta Aluminium Company. Then we have Aviation. They also provide what? Services. Ghana Airports Company Limited. When we look at these, we say that their main aim is to do what? Is to make profit. The services they render or the goods they provide or they produce for the consumption of the ordinary Ghanaian is to make profit out of the businesses they do, thereby helping government to do what? To raise revenue for other um, issues. Then we talk about the second category, also known as the non-commercial corporations. The motive is to render essential services to the state at affordable rates without making any profit. The main concern is that these are services ordinary people cannot do. And even if they do it, the consumer cannot afford. So, for example, we buy a little bottle of um, Bella Coffee for how much now? For two cities, 50 pesos or three cities. All right. If Bella Coffee was to provide us with cooking water as well as bathing water, Treated with their plants. I guess we cannot afford. Is that okay? So there are some there are some companies or there are some essential services that must be the priority of the state, even though it is a capitalist state. And so we can talk about broadcaster, we can talk about utilities, water, electricity, and the rest. And these are the priority of the state to provide these services at affordable rates with no motive of making what? profit. Sometimes it is even the government who subsidizes for the cost of the production of those services or those goods we enjoy. So that the ordinary Ghanaian or the ordinary citizen in the state will be fine, would find satisfaction in getting um, access to these commodities or services. So let's look at the features of public corporations. How do they look like? How different are they from private corporations or private entities? Why is it that SIC would operate different from, let's say, Glyco or any other um, private insurance company? Why is it that a commercial, Ghana Commercial Bank would operate differently from, let's say, um, Republic Bank? Is that okay? Why is it that other companies will operate differently from public corporations? First of all, we say that public corporations have legal entity. They assume a legal personality, okay? Now, the people who work in the business or who work in those corporations are different from the company. And so the company, the company alone can sue and be sued. It means that when you, make, you have a contract with that particular company, because it is a particular public corporation, because it is a legal entity, it can, and you do not perform the details of the contract, it can send you to court. At the same time, People who have interest in that business and have, been, have not been dealt properly or have not been dealt well with that particular public corporation can also send that public corporation to the court, all right, to get redress. So we say it assumes a legal personality. It is a legal entity. Is that okay? Very good. And then it may be fully or partly owned by the state. There are some instances, a particular concept we learn later called privatization. There are instances where the state will partner with individuals to control or administer and manage a particular entity. At other point, it is solely the state that um, controls or manages that particular public corporation. So we have some corporations in Ghana 
that are managed or are managed solely by the state. For example, Agricultural Development Bank. Then there are others that are partnered with governments. Sometimes they are officially state-owned companies. Along the line, they are privatized or they are not solely sold off. They are somehow, a part of it is sold off. There are other times when government, a particular entity has its own business, but government would then partner with it, all right, to become a state-owned or partially state-owned company. So we said that public corporations can be of two forms. They can be either fully owned by the state or they can be partly or partially owned by the state. Now, public corporations are governed by a board of directors, which are, I think we said that earlier on, which are, or who are appointed by a sector minister. Now, at the very beginning of the inception of that particular public corporation, there is uh, given or it is given over, its administration is awarded or given over to the sector minister. The sector minister would, on his own, or upon the recommendation of the segment entities in the state, would appoint people who are well versed or well um, experienced with that particular sector of the economy. So, for example, if it is a board for, let's say, um, Ghana Commercial Bank, these should be auditors, bankers, people who are in the banking sector and have proud knowledge, have in-depth knowledge about issues of banking. Is that okay? And so they will be now picked as board of directors. They will now control the entire entity known as the public corporation under the sector minister. Then they also enjoy a considerable measure of managerial and financial autonomy. To an extent, when Parliament brings it into being, it allows it to flow on its own, allows it to work on its own. Is that okay? Over the years, or within the year, at the end of the year sometimes, there is the submission by that particular entity known as a public corporation. It will submit to Parliament a, um, an annual report as well as an audit report, checking their accounts book as well as checking their records of, of their activities within the year. And that is the only time when Parliament would interfere with public operations. Either than that, they are allowed to enjoy some form of freedom financially. They determine how they will run the company either at, um, to maximize profits or to make things better. And then they are managed by the executives of the company, possibly by a CEO and a managing director. Another feature is that it is a statutory body with broad and specific aims created by an act of parliament or a special act of parliament. So when they are brought into being by parliament, they are assigned rules or they are given a broad aim, an objective. They are told the reason why that particular entity has been set up. Let's say Ghana Water Company is created today by parliament, a special act of parliament. They are mandated by that particular act. The act is known as the law. And that law will mandate it, will tell it what it should do. In which area are they operating? To what extent or to how far or to the scope of the operation is also made known through the act. All right, The act will specify what they must do. Is that okay? So if Ghana water is being set up today, it will be told in the act to provide water. Is it at a cost? Is it profit making? Is it for the rendering of services at no uh, motive with motive for profit? That is what we are talking about here. We say that it is a body set up by a law. Okay, it could be an enterprise, it could be anything, but they are set up by a law, and we call them public corporations. Employees of public corporations are public servants, not civil servants. You remember we talked about the sector minister. And the sector minister is a minister over that particular corporation, isn't it? Automatically, if you work on that minister, it means that you are so close to becoming part of the civil service. And so you should be called the civil service. No. But they serve the public directly. And so we call them public servants and not civil servants. They do not operate under the civil service. Let's look at some public corporations of Ghana. We can talk about Ghana Agricultural Development Bank. We can talk about Ghana Commercial Bank. We can talk about the Almighty Bank of Ghana. Then we can talk about Ghana Broadcasting Company Limited, State Insurance Company Limited, Ghana Airport Company Limited. And you can name more, more than I can, as many as you can. We can talk about State Housing Company Limited. We can talk about 
yes, Ghana National Petroleum Corporation and the rest. There are a whole lot of them. And so in your free, free time, you go online, you find them there. Let's see what they do, their functions. First and foremost, there are human beings who work in these areas. For the entity to grow and for the entity to be able to perform functions assigned it by the Act of Parliament, there must be human beings working there. And we say that it is the creation of employment. People are employed, cleaners, um, tellers, um, coordinators, and the rest. And they work to make sure that the activities of that particular co public corporation is in line with what has been assigned them by the public, by the, um, the legislative arm um, of government. Then another function is that it, it is a protection of the public from exploitation. They are created as a protection of the public from exploitation. Now, if some of the services we enjoy in the state is created or is being done by pri private individuals, it will mean that most of the things we enjoy cannot be enjoyed. An example is electricity. If it was a private entrepreneur or a private businessman who was in charge of Ghana, um, electricity company of Ghana, then it means that most of us cannot afford to buy electricity because it will be so high looking at the cost at which it is produced. I think I gave an example of water, that if it was Belakwa that was providing water for bathing as well as for cooking or food, then it will make it so impossible for most of us to buy water. I guess we'll go back to our villages and start bathing in the river again. Go and fetch river water and bring it to Accra to come and bath. So we say that it allows the public to enjoy some services at affordable rates so that the private entrepreneur does not exploit the consumer. Another function it performs is that it, it is the provision of essential services at affordable prices. People are able to patronize essential services like electricity, water, and the rest at very affordable, affordable prices. Now, for a bucket of water in Accra, I guess that if you have um, one Ghana CD, eh? mm -hmm. a CD, or let's say 50 pesos, you will be able to get a bucket of water for, for bathing. Is that all right? But if it was Belakwa, how many bottles would you buy to get one bucket to bath? So we say that it is the creation of this public corporation is it helps in the provision of essential services at affordable rates. It also provides capital for businesses. Now, there are a lot of people who have businesses in and around Ghana, and their main source of capital comes from some of these public corporations, especially the banks, um, from Agricultural Development Bam Bank, sorry, from Agricultural Development Bank, um, from Ghana Commercial Bank and the rest. They are able to source up capital to be able to um, do businesses or create businesses. And in that order as well, it also gives people the chance to employ other people under these businesses. It also allows government to control sensitive and risky aspects of the economy. There are some, some sides of our economy that can, shouldn't be entrusted in the hands of individuals or private individuals. One of them is defense. The other one is what we call um, weapon, weaponry, or we call nuclear warfare. So there are some areas of our economy, electricity being that as well. There are some parts of our economy that cannot be entrusted to individuals, obviously. They are so sensitive and risky. If you give it to an individual, the following morning you wake up and there is no Ghana. Is that all right? It is given to government to control so that he is able to put a cap on some of the activities of these risky and sensitive aspects of the economy. Another function is that it ensures effective economic development. Now, the presence of public operations allow effective economic development to take place. That businesses are allowed to thrive well. And uh, for those that are making profit, it, it helps the economy to boost up and to grow well. So that at the end of the day, the consumer is also satisfied. All right. Then we also talk about the generation of revenue for national development. Now, apart from the taxes we pay, there are other um, revenues that are accrued or are gotten from these public corporations over the years. Some of them, especially those who are into profits making, being their motive, accrue revenue for government or are able to raise revenue for government to be able to undertake some national developmental projects for the same people that paid for that service. 
Then apart from that, it also establishes, it is established to nationalize certain industries. At all costs, there should be an element of saying that the state owns certain businesses. It shouldn't always be the private entrepreneur, but at a point in time, there should be an element that would mean that governments also own property or own certain state properties. Is that okay? So it also helps to nationalize certain industries. But in all that they do, in all their functions, they are also controlled. Because if you do not control them, they become too powerful. And some of them may be of the specific aims to which they were created. Now, so we've talked, first of all, we want to talk about legislative control. All right. First of all, the law that brings it to being is a control in itself. The law that brings it to being is a control in itself. In that particular act, it determines the functions, who and the, the functions and the aim of that particular public corporation. Apart from that, it also indicates what they can do and what they cannot do. Is that right? This one has nothing with the constitution, but it is the legislative assembly that brings it into being. Okay, it brings it into being by creating an act. That act would determine its mode of operation. It, it reality on the ground, it also talks about what it can do and what it cannot do. Now, the legislative assembly in its power can also pass laws to weaken or strengthen the corporation. And sometimes it can even collapse the, uh, the particular corporation. Is that okay? Very good. So we say that it can also, in as much as it gives it the power to operate on its own, when they get to know that the powers that has been given them is either not too strong or it's too strong, it can weaken it by creating a counter what, a counter act or to that effect. In some states at all, it can even ask it not to operate again by the same act. Then annually, they submit what we call the audit and annual reports to the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. So parliament will then demand for the annual report of that particular public corporation, trying to know what it did within the year, its ways or its form of activities, that or the execution of certain activities it did within the year. Then the audit report, you know what audit means, all right? The checking or the review of the balance sheets, if they call it that way, how they got money and how they spent it, all right? So they would try to balance if what they've got is exactly what is there, what has been used. That, that, that has been used. Um, that fund that was used, was, has it been properly accounted for? Was it used for the right thing? The audit, the audit report by the Auditor General would indicate to Parliament. It will go to a committee in Parliament. I guess when we we're doing the Legislative Assembly, we said that the Legislative Assembly works with committees. One of Ghana's committee in parliament is called the public accounts committee what they seek to do is to check public spending if they give you one cd they will call you to come and account for the one cd especially when they get to know that you didn't use the one cd for the purpose to which it was assigned to you and so public accounts committee may invite the board or possibly may invite the executive or the minister in charge to come and answer questions on how funds were used within that particular public corporation then there's a question and answer time in Parliament with the sector minister once in a while. When things do not go too right with that particular public corporation, that sector minister will be invited to Parliament. And parliamentarians will have the advantage of asking the sector minister questions. He has an advantage. He can keep quiet. But it will show his inefficiency, isn't it? So he would have to answer questions on how or where the problem is coming from and how it can be solved. Then we have executive control. The executive also controls it. Remember that the executive control basically comes from the sector minister. We say ministers are part of the executive. They are an aspect of the executive, either appointed by the president or appointed in parliament by the prime minister. And so the sector minister has the power to hire and fire the board of directors. After all, he appointed them. And if they are not working to be satisfactory or his satisfactory, uh, per the recommendation of parliament, they can be dissolved or he can hire new ones. Then he can also discipline employees, especially the high-ranking officials. Now, in most cases, especially in Ghana, almost all public corporations have uh, chief, um, they have managing directors, 
they have um, chief executives of operations and all that. And these are sometimes employed by the board of directors. When they are not working up to standard or things are not going right, the sector minister has every possible right to discipline those employees. Then the sector minister also has the power to set up commissions of inquiries to investigate issues of corruption. So wherever there is the issue of that can known as corruption, the sector minister can create a, a commission to investigate, to inquire into how those corruption charges are either true or untrue and take appropriate actions. Then he has also the power to control the activities and genders of the agendums of the public operations. Now, if there's a sector minister in a particular area of a public operation, now without his due approval, no activity can be done. Everything that is done must meet his approval. All agendas of the public operation must meet the approval of that particular sector minister. And that is how executively public operations are controlled. And so judicially, they can also be controlled. Now we know that the judiciary has the power of, has so much power over almost all agents and agencies of the state. Now one thing is that when there is somebody who is aggrieved, all right, they take lawsuits of aggrieved persons or companies. And now for example, if we have um, a company that has a contract with, let's say, Agricultural Development Bank, and Agricultural Development Bank does not um, honor the particular contract, though it had accepted, and may have taken some power and payment, and does not honor the particular contract, then those aggrieved persons or person or persons or company or companies can take the Agricultural Development Bank to court. And the judiciary will sit on the case because it is a legal entity. Is that okay? It is a legal entity. It can sue and be sued. And when it is being sued, the court is the entity that does it. We say that is a way by which the judiciary controls the public operations. Apart from that, it also has the power of judicial review to an extent. All right? It can monitor the activities of these public corporations and sometimes notify or call the attention of uh, that particular sector minister to book to um, tell him of something that is happening. Then we have something known as, we have a concept known as regulatory agencies. We say regulatory agencies are um, public financed. They can be bodies, they can be authorities, they can be commissions, and they can be um, agencies that are created by the state. They are financed by the state and created by the state to regulate both public and private companies and enterprises in the state. Is that okay? So we have a lot of them. We have um, Foods and Drugs um, Authority or Board. We have Ghana Standards Board. We have, what else? Um, Ghana Environmental Protection Agency and the rest. They are all regulatory agencies. And for whichever and that whichever agency any public corporation falls under is also subject to the rules and regulations that covers that particular regulatory agency. Is that okay? So for example, if Ghana is in the process or has an industry that produces food, like the Ekunfi, um, pineapple, something, something, then it is under the Foods and Drugs Authority. They would go and Yes, they would go and regulate the activity. Sometimes they go there to do and um, look around the particular factory and see if food being processed are processed under hygienic conditions or under approved conditions set up by the Foods and Drugs Board. To that extent, we say that the regulatory agencies can also what, check and control these public corporations. Bank of Ghana is a regulator, even though it in itself it is a public corporation. And it regulates all financial institutions in the state. And so that means that ADB does not have its own power to do what it wants. It means that the Bank of Ghana also regulates the activities of ADB and Ghana Commercial Bank. And that is a control in itself. Very good. Then we have another control known as a public control. We talk about the actions of pressure groups. I remember at a point in time when we had issues with electricity or power flow through um, the Ghana, um, the electricity company of Ghana, uh, there were some pressure groups that went on the street and 
um, demonstrated that the services of um, electricity company of Ghana was not was not doing too good. The services rendered wasn't the very best, and that is one way by which the public can control these public operations. When it does that, it is able to sit on its um, it heals and work better. Then we have public opinion, the aggregate views of people, how people say things, how people see things and express their opinion regarding the activities of some public operations. There's also sometimes a way by which we will be able to control these public operations to do what is right. Then we talk about the almighty media, where they are able to publish and have um, some panelists on some TV stations who would talk about the activities of these public corporations and its, um, its, its activities as well as its mode of operations. And when it is not going too well, they are able to bring it to its knowledge and then pray that it does better. But in all this, they have problems. Public corporations in Ghana have a lot of problems. One of them is lack of raw materials. There are some, some companies in Ghana that would have to bring in is that all right? Would have to bring in raw materials from foreign lands to be able to um, produce the goods they produce as well as to be able to render the services they render to the state. And that alone is a problem because when we are bringing those raw materials in, there is a high cost to pay. The raw material itself from outside the, the, shores, the shores of Ghana is very expensive. In addition as well, they would have to pay some duties and other things to be able to bring it into, um, into Ghana to be able to produce those goods and services. Then there is the issue of inappropriate location. Now there is um, a factory somewhere. The raw materials is in another place. There is a factory somewhere, but, or there is a business somewhere, but its ready market is somewhere else. It makes the location of that public operation inappropriate. So at the end of the day, it runs at a loss because it's at the wrong place. Is that okay? So that is another problem for Ghana. Then we talk about unreliable power supply. Most um, businesses and most industries and manufacturing um, companies in Ghana use what uh, power supply, specifically electricity. Now once in a while, electricity does not come as it should. And so it makes it a problem to get or should be able to maximize its potential as a public corporation. Then there's the incidence of monopoly, all right? We say wherever there's monopoly, there is ineffectiveness. Because when one person controls a particular mode of operation, and there is no competition, there is no efficiency. And so there's an incidence of monopoly where other, for example, Electricity Company of Ghana, if they had a competitor, I guess that things would look different, isn't it? Very good. But they are the sole distributor or the sole producer and distributor to the Ghanaian clients of electricity, hydroelectric power. And it makes it a little, you know. So we said that when there is the incidence of monopoly, efficiency is not that very well. Then we talk about corruption. Now, in most African states, or specifically in Ghana, people go to work and say, oh, I guess you understand that statement. It's for all of us. And so they go and where monies or funds are supposed to go into something else, it is in something else. Because the assumption is that it is called state so-so and so. Eh? It is Ghana so-so and so. So it belongs to all of us. Eh? So people go to work and where funds are supposed to go to a particular place for production to be done, it is in the pocket of somebody and that is corruption. And that is a problem we have in Africa as a whole as well as Ghana. And then we talk about political interference where um, political leaders would want to manipulate the, um, the working force and the mode of operation of some public operations. And so family and friends are in all the places. Politically, because um, if a particular party gains power, we are talking about government here, right? So a particular power, you know how, how parties gain power? They contest at what? Election. And so some some party faithfuls are, are promised that when their party wins, and they are going to give them work. Is that it? And that is where political interference come in. And so round holes, where square pegs are put into round holes, and it creates a lot of inefficiencies. Then we have inadequate skilled personnel. 
Now, it's not that the personnel are not there, but those who are skilled are not ready to work in public operations. Is that okay? They will prefer to work in private companies. And so that is another problem where you find more unskilled labor in the public operation than skilled labor. Then there's the lack of capital. Some of the businesses need huge sums of money, huge sums of um, funds. The funds must be huge. For example, Ghana Water Company, uh, we'll talk about Electricity Company of Ghana and the rest. They need huge capital to be able to make it, to, make, to be able to make production work. And when it, la it is lacking, it means that um, that particular public operation is in trouble. Then we talk about management and maintenance problem, which is a problem with most Ghanaians. The beauty of the freshly painted company, our factory is today. Tomorrow things are done anyhow. How to maintain these businesses become a problem. All right, misappropriation of funds, embezzlement of funds and all that. Create a lot of problems with management as well as maintaining the production sector of that particular public operation. Then there's a non-compliance with objectives. Now, when they are set up by the Act of Parliament, they are also given aims and objectives to comply with. Some public corporations will put the aims and directives somewhere and do their own thing. At the end of the day, if it was a processing company, it now becomes a retail shop. And that is where a problem of the problem comes from. When these problems arise, all right, governments now would begin to look at other places where it would source for help. And sometimes when all, all hope is lost, it would go into what we call privatization. Have we understood? We talked about some of the problems. And sometimes when the businesses are not doing too well, it means that government must get it off its hands or get half of it off its hands. And we call that process privatization. Privatization is the process of transferring ownership of a business entity agency or property from the state or public sector to the private sector. Okay, so remember we've talked about a lot of its problems. And when it is so overwhelming for government to, to take, it will now look for other avenues where those companies or agencies or business entity or property would do better without state interference. And we call it privatization. We say it is a process of transferring ownership. So it no longer belongs to government. It now belongs to private individuals. It no longer, somehow, their whole, sometimes when they do it partially, governments will sit on the fence and watch the private company or the private entity it is partnering with take over the affairs of that particular um, public corporation. It is now no longer called a public corporation. It will now be called a private company or enterprise. We call this process privatization. Some people prefer to call it the sale of public corporations. But we say that it is a transfer of what? Ownership. It no longer belongs to the state. It now belongs to pub uh, private individuals. We say that privatization can be totally or partially done. Okay? Public corporations can be totally or partially privatized. Like I said, sometimes governments will get it off its hands by giving it over to a, a private entrepreneur or a private businessman or woman at a cost. Sometimes it would add the employees as well. At a place where the private entrepreneur says, I don't need employees, it means that the employees must do it, must go home. Because it's been given over. Ownership has been transferred. Or sometimes governments will sit on the fence and maintain a portion of its ownership and give the rest to private entrepreneurs to do what? To manage. And an example is Vodafone. Is that okay? Very good. So a large portion has been given over to some private entrepreneurs and government maintains a small portion of its ownership. Now we say that this process is also known as divestiture or denationalization. It means that we have taken away, it's been taken away from the state. It's been divestitized. Is that right? Very good. So then let's talk about this. State-owned companies of Canada has been privatized. I have itemized them to five. It is your responsibility to look for some state-owned companies of Ghana that has been privatized. I guess you can do that. Very good. So you are going to look for five state-owned companies of Ghana that has either been what 
wholly or partially or partly privatized. Let's see reasons why public operations are privatized. The first one is to improve efficiency. The issue of management, all right, mismanagement, embezzlement, corruption, sometimes pulls down the production system of the public operation. It does not allow it to harness um, so much profit or make its work well done. Is that okay? And so to that extent, it would give it to a private businessman. And I don't think that a private businessman will watch you come to work late, come and lazy around and do nothing at all. No, you'll be sad. And so when it is given to a private company, also get to know that private companies are created to make profit. You don't expect me to build a business and then lose or run it at a loss, isn't it? I would run it to profit, no matter, or to get profits, no matter how hard, by all means, I must gain profits. And so it is to bring about the issue of efficiency. Then it is also to reduce political interference. When public corporations are privatized, now it no longer belongs to the state. So you don't go to elections and promise party faithful that you give them work over here and over there. The business no longer belongs to the state. And so this time, people do not bring their family members and friends to be what? To be employed by these state-owned companies. Very good. Then we talk about it exposes, it exposes state enterprises to market competition. The moment it leaves the hands of the state, people now have the boldness to also create similar um, businesses. In the past, when um, state, uh, how do you call it? Um, STC, State Transport Company, all right, was solely for the, um, the state. It was impossible for people to have um, these kinds of transport services. But the moment it was privatized partially, it gave other entrepreneurs the advantage of um, coming into the business with regards to transportation. So today when you go to Circle, for example, you see VVIP, in addition to STC, you will see um, there are a whole lot of them. Yes, VIP and the rest, OA and the rest. And uh, when it was exposed, it, it exposes the um, state's corporation now privatized to the open market competition. Then it also allows government to raise revenue through privatization. Anytime government transfers ownership, in the transfer of the public corporation, it also gains some sort of advantage by getting funds and sometimes a lot of it to be able to work on other areas of the economy so that it would do well better there. And so government is able to raise revenue. It also enables the government to concentrate on essential parts of the economy. As it is, if today Ghana does not go into transport service, there's a lot of transport businesses. But there are other areas it must rather turn its attention to, like the issue of energy, the issue of um, other essential services of the state communication and the rest. So then when it loses its idea or it loses those companies to other private companies, it now will turn its um, attention to those other essential parts of the economy that needs it. Then there is the issue of job opportunities. Is that okay? People are able to be employed. Even though people will still go home, a lot of them will still gain employment in these privatized companies. But there are the other side of privatization. Now, when the company was for government, all right, it was gaining what? It was gaining profits. It was gaining profits. But then the moment it is privatized, Ghana loses potential dividends or profits from the privatized corporations or privatized company. Now, the new owner who is a private entrepreneur will not pay government any profits any longer. All profits goes into the account of the new owner. The only thing government might get out of that particular um, privatized company is taxes. Is that okay? So it loses a whole lot of um, potential profits and dividends. Then there's a problem of redundancy and unemployment. Now, when let's say a company that was running at a loss is taken over by a private company, in most cases, it is because there has been issues of um, mismanagement, embezzlement, and the rest. Now, the new owner is going to look at the staffing and look at those that are vital or those who created the problem 
and send them all home. Sometimes if the company is not careful, everybody is sent home. And then they advertise, they will now advertise for new employees. All right, they would invite vacancies. They will create vacancies and invite people to what? To apply for them. And when they come, it means that all those who were, who were there are now unemployed and are redundant. They are now at home or looking for a new job. Then another thing is that when the company is given over or it is privatized to private entrepreneurs, this time, these private firms will not exploit the public. Is that okay? No. So for, for example, we have some um, communication companies in Ghana. Uh, we have Airtel, Tigo, we have Vodafone, we have MTN. And sometimes, let's be, fr let's be frank, some of them exploit the consumers. It's because they are private firms. Now, when you give it to the private owner or the private enterprise, the person needs money. The person wants profit. It is not a state enterprise. And so it will not put in funds and get nothing else. And so definitely exploitation will take place. Then, and so the, then the, other, the last issue we want to talk about with the demerit of privatization is the problem of regulating private firms. If it was a public corporation, you can regulate it. Okay, you can get it to do what is right. But private firms have its own system. And they have a good way of hiding things. And so it becomes difficult to regulate the activities of these private firms. Is that okay? So then we've had a very short lesson. But then we've talked about what public corporations are. Is that okay? And we've said that public corporations are those entities that are owned by government. And their main aim is to provide essential services. We say some of them are commercial entities. Others are commercial entities with the motive of making profits, and others are, are what are those that are not supposed to be making what profits. They only provide essential services for the comfort of the consumer. Is that okay? And we've also talked about some features of the public corporation, and then we've talked about the functions they perform and problems we have in Ghana with regards to public corporations. And we talked about how these problems can result in privatization or the transfer of ownership from the public sector or from the government to private individuals. Now I have a few trial questions for you. You would be able to answer as easy as that. And so we'll be asking what is privatization, which is this particular question. And these questions are some wasi questions. And we, can, we should see if we could be able to answer them. The first one is, what is privatization? What four reasons necessitate the privatization of public operations? What causes governments to give over or to transfer ownership to public, private um, entrepreneurs? And the last one is, what problems does privatization cause in a state? When you are done answering these questions, I've always told you, you go and look for your government teacher in school and ask him or her to help you to see if you are right, you did it right, or would give you an insight into these questions again. Is that okay? Very good. So I'm leaving it here for about two, a minute, and so that you can either pick them up, um, write them down as fast as you can, or screenshot them and use them to do a revision of public corporations. Very good. Now these are some of the places where I got some of my, we, um, the resources I used in getting our lesson today done. Uh, as usual, we have the GES syllabus and other materials from some renowned writers of government. Then, as usual, we went online to get a few current news or current information about public corporations. I guess we've gotten all that right. It has been an interesting time, isn't it? Yes. So all too soon again, we have come to the end of this particular presentation on public corporations. All too soon, we have come to the end of today's presentation or this particular presentation on public corporations. I hope that you have followed all along and have gotten to understand what public corporations are. This is for second year. And so we meet again, as you know, it is by
subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.